Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on inequalities. Our objectives today are that you will be able to graph inequalities, you will be able to write an inequality from a graph, and you will be able to determine if a value belongs to the solution set of an inequality. So three objectives today. Here's the question I want you thinking about. What does the graph of an inequality represent? Let's first understand what an inequality is. An inequality compares two expressions using the symbols less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. Here is an example of an inequality. X is greater than or equal to three. Here we have a variable expression being compared to a numerical expression. So as we proceed through our unit of study on inequalities, you'll learn more about variable expressions, inequalities, but I want you to understand that an inequality is comparing, and it's saying that this is greater than or less than or greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, to another value. You could have two variable expressions, you could have two numerical expressions, but we use greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to, to compare. Now let's talk about the graph of an inequality. The graph of an inequality is a visual representation of all the solutions of an inequality. So unlike an equation, there isn't one solution. There are an infinitely many solutions. So when we graph an inequality, you could see an open circle. So it's what, what's not shaded in, it's empty. And this is used to represent less than and greater than since the number is not a solution. So when the number is not because it's less than that number or it's greater than that number but not equal to that number, we put an open circle on the number line. So think of it as empty, not equal to that number. Then we could also have a closed circle where you can see that this is all shaded in, it's filled in. And that is used to represent less than or equal to and greater than or equal to since that number value is part of the solution set. So it's closed in because it can be that. It is, could be equal to. And then we have an arrow. The arrow is used with the open or closed circle. So we either have an arrow and a closed circle or an arrow and an open circle. And the arrow could point to the left or it could be in the direction of going towards the right. We use this to highlight all the values that are part of the solution set. Now let's talk about how the, to graph one. What are the steps? So to graph an inequality, you first are gonna determine, are you gonna use an open or closed circle? So once again, an open circle is used for less than or greater than, and a closed circle is used for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. I had a student years ago that told me they remember open and closed by this inequality symbol is open and there's nothing here to close it, whereas this inequality symbol has this equal sign and they could bring it up and close the inequality arrow. So I thought that was pretty clever. Then after we determine where the, we're using an open or closed circle, we are going to shade using an arrow, the part of the number line that belongs in the solution set. So two steps, determine open or closed, and then the direction of the arrow. Now let's graph an inequality. So here we have an inequality that says X is greater than or equal to negative one. The first thing I'm going to do is put my value, my numerical value on my number line. Now I don't know how your teacher is, but I only require my students to have one number on their number line. Because we're graphing and we're representing a solution set, I don't need them to put all the values. That's just a waste of time. So I ask them to label one point, the one they need, negative one. And then I need to determine that this is going to be a closed circle because it can be equal to. So I'm gonna put a closed circle on negative one because it can be greater than or equal to negative one. So it can be negative one, close the circle, and then it's everything greater than that. So I'm gonna shade everything to the right. 
So again, understanding that this represents any number greater than negative 1. It could be 0, 1, 2, 2 and a half, 3.1. All the values to the right and including negative 1 are part of this inequality solution set. So it's a set of numbers and not one number. Let's look at our second one we have here. X less than 1 half. So I'm going to put 1 half on my number line. I'm going to identify that I need an open circle because it cannot be equal to. It must be less than. So open circle, it's one half is not in the solution set. That would not be true. One half is not less than one half. It is equal to, and there's no equal to. And now it's going to be all the values less than this. So we're going to shade to the left, less than left, all the numbers lower. So it can't be one half. But it could be 0, it could be negative 10, it could be negative 11 and a half. It's all and any of the numbers that are less than 1 half. So an infinite amount of solutions in our solution set. Now it's your turn. I would like you to pause the video now and graph both of these inequalities and then come back to check your work. Welcome back. So our first thing is to put the 7 on here. You notice I move it around. It really doesn't matter where it is. You don't even need to have all these hashtags if you're in my class, all these tally marks. And I identify that it's going to be an open circle because it cannot be equal to. It cannot be equal to 7, so open circle. And then it's all the values less than. So my arrow is going to shade my solution set to the left of my open circle on 7. My second one, I'm going to put negative 4.6 as a point on my graph. And then I'm going to identify I need a closed circle because it can be greater than or equal to. So closed circle. And it's all the numbers greater than this number. So I'm going to shade to the right. So all of these values on my number line are part of the solution set of this inequality. Now it's your turn again. Now I'm gonna, we're gonna work backwards. Now I've given you the graph and I want you to write the inequality that represents the graph. Please pause the video now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So the first thing I wanna note is that this is a closed circle and it's pointing to the left. So I'm gonna do x less than or equal to negative five. So it's easy to identify my negative 5 because that's my number. And my arrow is going to the left, meaning less than, and it's equal to. If your variable term, if you put your variable term, your variable expression on the left side, when we read an equation or an inequality left to right, if you start with your variable, here's a little tip. Your inequality symbol will match the direction of your arrow on your solution. But if you flip-flop these, it won't be the same. So be careful. All right, the second one. We're going to do x, and it's going to be greater than. It's going to the right, and it's just greater than, no equal to, because it's an open circle. So x greater than 8.7, and that represents the inequality that represents the graph. Here's your turn again. I would like you to determine if 4 is part of the solution set of this inequality. Go ahead and pause, give it a thought, and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So because 4 is where my open circle is, 4 is not a solution to this inequality. Because it's not a closed circle, it's open, so this actually represents all the values less than 4, but not including 4. Try another one. Is 2.8 a solution on, of this inequality? Go ahead and pause, think about it, and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So let's first identify where 2.8 is on our graph. So if this is 2.6, you could have estimated anywhere, but we know it's to the right of 2.6. So it's over here. If we did 2.7, 2.8, so however you want to um, put the values on your number line, you've only been given one, so you could go in by tenths or you can increase by one, 
Regardless, 2.8 will be to the right of 2.6, and therefore, yes, it is in the solution set because it's in the shaded area of our graph. And there you have it. That is how you interpret inequalities, how you graph them, and how you determine if a solution is part of the solution set. I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and learn how to solve an inequality. Have a great day.